Hey, Brian here. Um, got a 1996 Lance Squire 8000 camper here on a 2008 F250. Uh, done some power updates that I wanted to share with you, uh, primarily in the name of weight. Um, you know, we bought this camper back in December. We've, we've used it quite a bit. Um, we tend to only boondock or camp off grid. Um, started out with a couple of 100 amp hour lead acid batteries that weighed you know, about 130 pounds. Um, we had them back in there's my finger here, the, the generator compartment. Our, our, our camper doesn't have the uh, factory generator, but was a convenient place to put batteries. But you can see how far that is behind our rear axle. So, you know, 130 pounds back here translates to a fair amount of weight on the axle. Um, so we wanted to clear up, clean up some of that weight, um, get rid of the generator, which we don't really like to run. Um, so, you know, we decided right away that we were gonna get some, some lithium battery for this thing and uh, solar, which we've had on all our, our campers in the past. So anyway, I'm just gonna go through and kind of step through some of these upgrades that we've made. Uh, so you get a, an idea of what it would take to convert your old, what we call Bigley camper uh, to kind of some modern power systems that work for uh, some enjoyable off-grid off camping. All right, so a little windy up here. We're in Colorado, it's almost always windy. Just taking a look, um, the first thing that we added was this Renogy 175 watt flexible panel. Again, because of weight, uh, we were really looking at um, trying to shave wherever we could, right? So this thing is only six pounds for 175 watts, really lightweight. It's also on the front of the camper, which um, is slanted a little bit, kind of a convenient place out of the way and um, doesn't add any weight to the camper really. So we used 3MVHB kind of around the edge perimeter of the panel and then uh, the Durabond tape around the edges just to keep water nice out from underneath and keep wind from lifting it. Um, you know, there's people that put it on corrugated plastic cardboard. Um, I've read about that. I didn't think it looked very robust uh, and also didn't think it was necessary based on, you know, the Renogy says you can mount these right to the panel. So anyway, it's an experiment. We'll see how it works out. Uh, I think it's gonna be fine. For convenience, we were lucky that our roof vent for our refrigerator uh, was, was here and not on a slide or on the wall. So I was able to, to remove kind of the, the screws here, pop this off and run our 10 gauge uh, solar wire right down through the refrigerator compartment. So I'm gonna go down in there and show you what that looks like inside of the, uh, the outer, outer access door to the refrigerator. All right, so I've already taken the cover off here. You can see it's not missing, it's just off. So this is the access door for the refrigerator. It's an absorption refrigerator, which I hate. Uh, that'll be going soon for a compressor refrigerator, but you can see those wires that entered up on the roof uh, through the, the refrigerator vent come down through here uh, along the floor. And the only hole I had to drill in the camper for this install really was uh, for these two wires. So these go in, there's a little space kind of under the refrigerator um, where I was able to fish those wires through there. And I'll go inside and show you what that looks like on the inside. All right, so climbing in the back here to this great big giant camper, which we've really come to love because it has so much room, uh, is our giant refrigerator. That roof vent we were looking at is pretty much up there above the refrigerator. So those wires come in, they follow along the, the other side of this wall down here and then when we come and look at the bottom of the refrigerator it's actually open under here um, this is accessible to that little space where i drilled so i drilled that hole and pushed the wires into this this little void area here so it was really easy to fish them over here and then uh, get this out of the way i'll leave it there so so this step on my camper at least had just a couple of phillips screws i was able to hinge that up kind of continue fishing those wires through over to here and into the compartment there. All right, so now we're looking into this area under the sink. Um, if we can look here, those wires end up here into a 20 amp fuse and then into a Victron 7515. So that's a MPPT charge controller can accept up to uh, 75 volts and 15 amps. So if I go to a second panel up there, which is likely, I'll have to upgrade this uh, probably to the, the 130. Uh, my panel puts out around 10 amps short circuit current. So, uh, you know, this wouldn't be quite size, but I do a lot of solar stuff. So I didn't worry that, um, you know, that I wouldn't be able to reuse this guy. Uh, it was around $118, but this one has the built-in Bluetooth, which is really nice. So I can track, you know, power coming from the panel in, in an app on my phone, which is, which is really cool. Um, 
Up above that is a Blue C uh, six circuit fuse panel that I use for things that we've added to the camper. Um, right now, the charge controller feeds into that. Um, there's a there's a heater, a few other things that are up there. Over here, we have a Renogy 20 amp DC DC charge controller. So since we've upgraded to lithium, the deal with that is lithium can draw lots of current. Um, now I've got a 100 amp battery, I could charge that at 50 amps. I could have gone with a bigger uh, DC DC charger. We didn't really feel like we needed the bigger ones. They have, they have a 40 and a 60 amp. Um, so we thought the 20 was fine for us. We, we really wanted to charge mostly with solar, but this allows us to have a multi-stage charge algorithm for that and limit the amount of power coming from the alternator. If the battery was totally dead and was wired straight to the alternator, there's, there's a possibility of that really just drawing too much power uh, over, the, over the wires coming in. So this is just really a limiter and also a, a way to charge them um, you know, better than just a straight alternator would be able to do. Uh, below that, we've got a 600 watt true sine wave inverter. We don't use a lot of AC, but I can charge, you know, ham radios that don't come with a DC option or um, our little TV if we want to watch a movie. So anyway, this is this is stuff we've added. Uh, I've heard some concern from people. What if your sink leak, leaks? Well, maybe it will. You know, I might cover this with a, a Tupperware type box um, with some ventilation. We'll see. Um, up on top there, there's a little... I don't know, $15 temperature controller I picked up on Amazon. Uh, that is wired through to my battery box, which you can see the backside of my insulated battery box here. These two wires, there's a temperature sensor and a power wire going out there. So I am able to regulate the temperature of that battery box. Um, currently I have the set point at 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So this, this just controls that, keeps that battery box warm so that I can charge the battery out there. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, I've got the cover off our power converter system down here. Um, I've done a few modifications to this. When we bought the camper, the, the factory battery charger side of this didn't work. It was able to supply 12 volts to our appliances when we were plugged in, but it wasn't charging the battery. It was also a really pretty crappy system. It was a transformer and diode based uh, charger, so you know, not multi-stage, good, good system for boiling batteries. Um, so immediately what I did was to remove this lower section here. So when I remove these, these four screws, this whole lower tray slides out. You have to deal with the wires too. Um, but I, I could remove all that garbage out of that original power circuit for the, the 12 volts. And I just replaced it with this IOTA DLS45 DLS um, charger. I'm a big fan of these IOTA things. The really cool thing about them are these new external IQ modules, these smart modules. So again, when we first uh, set this up and I put this in, we were running the lead acids. For $20, I bought an IQ4 for, for lead acid batteries that you know creates a charge algorithm right for those batteries. Um, when we switched over to lithium, they make this IQ4 LIFE PO4 module that again, it, it turns this into a smart charger um, for only a $20 difference. I can add and, and change it between different types of battery chemistry now. Um, so that's great. I can charge this battery at 45 amps when I'm plugged into shore power or the generator easily. Uh, I used and powered it off my microwave breaker here just because most of the time I don't want it on. Uh, even plugged in at home, I'd rather just use the solar. So I have the ability to turn that on and off. All the camper loads that were factory wired, the ceiling fans, the lights, the refrigerator control circuit, those are all still running through here. What I did have to do is move this this wiring a little bit so this blue wire is actually a jumper that goes to the back side of this this black so on the other side of the circuit board um, you know you could access another another connection point so this blue wire just jumps over there um, the factory setup the way that it worked was when you plugged into shore power your uh, your 12 volt circuits were not connected to the battery anymore that that circuit isolated the battery charged it and powered your 12 volt devices from you know this this circuit down here now the way i've got it jumped my 12 volt loads are always connected to the battery and when the battery charger is working it's charging the battery but everything's always connected it just seems cleaner and simpler and and otherwise you'd have to modify this now you you can replace this whole panel which would have probably been the same price would have looked new uh, i liked the cool old retro brown it matched the system but this is now kind of a modern system for i don't know 150 dollars you know, I've, I've updated this to be a really good quality battery charging uh, circuit and distribution center uh, without having to 
fuss around with rewiring, maybe changing the size and having to trim it out. So anyway, that was my preference is, is to just update this old system. All right, so just for, for reference, actually that's upside down so you can see what, what that all looks like closed up. You know, you've got the cover. This is a Magnatec Power Plus, uh, sorry, 6325. You know, it's it's a pretty old technology, although RVs tend to use pretty crappy stuff anyway. And this was probably never very nice, um, but maybe it was the quality of the time. But it was a 25 amp battery charger, probably never worked as a battery charger, probably always boiled batteries. So anyway, it's upgraded now, um, but still has this cool retro scratched up brown uh, awesomeness look to it. Okay, looking under the hood here, I've got a gasser engine, 5.4, pretty weak. Uh, just the single battery, but I essentially tapped off uh, with some more six gauge wire um, Here went into a hundred amp circuit breaker. I kind of built this custom aluminum plate. So I've got my ARB Compressor there. I can air up either my airbags as needed manually or my tires if I've aired down Added a little six relay block there so I can uh, switch exterior LEDs on things like that, but this this six gauge wire there's a, a negative and positive. They're just running along the frame down to uh, the top front corner of the bed, which I'll show you. So wrapped in spiral loom, pretty well protected. All right, so in the factory battery compartment, which is in this front corner of the driver's side, is where we're gonna see the uh, Battleborn Beauty there. It's 100 amp hour, lithium iron phosphate, uh, built-in BMS. You'll see my heater circuit here that I built. It's just a, uh, actually on the back side is the temp sensor for that temp controller. A little 12 volt, 60 millimeter muffin fan, kind of a homemade little heat sink. And then a two ohm, 100 watt resistor here. So when that temperature controller calls for heat, when it gets below my 45 degree set point, just provides 12 volt power to this resistor, uh, which ends up putting out about 75 watts, depending on battery voltage and the fan and then just mixes air around here. And it works really well. It keeps this compartment at, at temperature. Now I will say that the Battleborn uh, does have a built-in BMS battery monitoring system that will prevent charging below freezing. So it's already protected, um, which is good, but I wanted to be able to charge it below freezing. We do a lot of winter camping and that was important to us. Um, you'll see I also have the Victron Bluetooth uh, temperature sensor that works in conjunction with my MPPT charge controller. So the the Victron will also not try to charge this battery below freezing, which is great. So I've got two protections really against um, this battery trying to be charged or even taking a charge below freezing. Um, and then I've got the heater and this, this works really well. I found if I keep, since this is at the top of the compartment, if I keep this at about 45, um, you know, this sensor that's actually down here and hooked to the battery will generally stay about 36, 37 degrees. Um, so it, it works really well. I've added some insulation here to the door, half inch insulation and, and the perimeter is gasketed pretty well. So um, I found if it's about 15 to 20 degrees out at night, keeping this compartment at 45 degrees usually uh, takes about 5% of my battery capacity overnight, um, which isn't horrible. And that's usually put back in pretty quickly in the morning. Um, so it's bearable. I can also turn that controller off if I'm really trying to conserve power. So one last thing that's really an important part of a system like this is, is a capacity monitor. Um, with a lithium battery, you'll find they have one of the, one of the benefits of them is that they have a very flat discharge curve, which means you can't use battery voltage as an indication of your remaining capacity. So this uses a, a shunt, a, a basically a really low resistance um, resistor on the neutral or negative lead of the battery, and it tracks all the current in and out of the battery. Um, you program this for your capacity. So this one's programmed for 100 amp hours. Let's me view the voltage. Let's me view the current or amperage in and out of the battery. And then everything has a percentage of the battery. So I know right now I've got 100 percent or 100 amp hours left. Um, that's really important. This is a, a cheap $40 unit that I've bought on Amazon. I've got five of these on different, you know, battery systems I have. They work really well. They're cheap. Certainly the, the Victrons are nicer. You can pair them to your phone. I wasn't really worried about logging. I really just wanted to know what my battery capacity was at. So for me, this $40 guy works really well. I'll pop inside the cabinet and show you what the shunt looks like. All right, so there's the shunt. It's really just a, like I said, a resistor, but a high, a high current resistor. I think this one's rated for 350 amps, but the neutral wire coming out of the battery goes straight to this. And then any load 
is is measured on the other side of it so it, it really is measuring everything in and out of the battery uh, on that neutral line of the battery so it keeps track of everything this guy just gets some 12 volt uh, fuse 12 volts just to operate the meter comes with this sorry about that comes with this cute little harness there that wires to the back side of the um, monitor itself so it's really easy to install can't quite see that but it's it's up there and uh, anyway they work really well no matter uh, which which lithium battery you go with which monitor you go with make sure that you do have some kind of capacity monitor the lances and most most campers are going to come with some type of panel like this um, this panel becomes pretty useless right when you get lithium because it's going to show you that the battery's charged because it's just based off voltage you know a, a typical lead acid battery is going to be charged when it's over you know maybe 13.6 volts well this battery sits around 13.6 volts all the way until it's dead so you'll find that you can still use this meter for your tanks it's great for that but your battery is always going to show as full here so again this is uh this meter can still be here but it adds very little value once you upgrade to a lithium system all right and so the last thing i guess i'd mention is is why that heater's in there right i mentioned that um that, that the battery's protected against being charged. Um, if you try to charge a lithium iron phosphate below freezing, it damages the battery. Uh, so, you know, Battleborn's done a great deal putting their BMS in protecting against that. Um, Victron's even added that feature. If you set it up as a lithium, it won't charge below that. Um, Battleborn has come out with a heated battery, which is a great idea. The, the downside or the, the pitfall of that is that I was talking about how we measure the current on the negative lead. That's how all of these battery monitors work, right? The capacity monitors, they always work on the neutral side of the battery or negative side of the battery. Um, for some reason, Battleborn decided to um, put the heater inside the battery, cool idea. They only brought one lead out for that heater, which was the positive lead. So you connect that positive lead to a switch or to the positive post, self-regulates, keeps itself warm, but you don't have any way of tracking that power. So all of the power being used in that battery isn't accounted for with the external battery capacity meter. So, you know, like I said, I use 5% of my battery at night, and when I wake up in the morning with this system, I know that I'm at 95% or that I've used 5%. Uh, with the Battleborn, that's gonna be, you, you won't know, right? You'll have no indication of how much power you've used. Um, you won't know your battery's capacity again until it's fully charged, until you see your battery drawing zero amps. Um, and at that point, you know, your meter will reset itself. Once it hits 100, um, it'll, it'll hit 100 before it's charged, right? It'll hit 100, but it's still drawing current because it's counted all the amps back in that it counted out, but it missed all of those amps that were being used by the heater. So you'll have to actually wait until it's at 100 and it's not drawing any current, which is anybody's guess. Um, so this system, even though it's a little bit more kludgy, uh, not as clean as the Battleborn system, it allows me kind of full control and full tracking over it. So anyway, hopefully that's been useful. You can see it's, uh, it's a pretty nice system, should give us a lot of years of service. I would estimate maybe, um, maybe $1,500 total investment in this system with the solar, charge controllers, batteries. I had a lot of wiring laying around, but it's certainly, uh, not an impossible do-it-yourself project. Um, you'll pay a lot more for other people to do it for you, certainly, and labor is is uh, is worth it if you can't do it yourself. Um, make sure you find somebody that can do a good job. It's tough sometimes to uh, to get people that can do these things that are robust and, and will last and, and are done correctly and safe. Um, so do make sure that um, you get all that so you don't spend a lot of money and burn your camper down. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and uh, post any comments or questions that you've got.